Hey guys, I had to do a quick circle back here at the uh, St. Joseph Cemetery. Uh, when I was doing the um, video on the exorcist, there was a grave that we went by that uh, we, uh, when I was in editing, I, I went back over it and I, I looked up, uh, it was a boy and uh, it's a really sad story. So I thought I would come back here and uh, at least get a better, a better picture of him, his pictures on the grave. So let's, uh, let's do that. It was right up here. A family member uh, dates back on this one grave is was a bride and I think it was this one right here yes heck and the boy's last name is not heck the boy's last name is Ochaki and uh, not far from where my cabin is up north in Wisconsin you know the clue here was uh, the snowmobile uh, on his uh, the passion the passion of snowmobiling uh, that actually turned out to be the instrument of his death and that is Joseph 16 years old passed away he was uh, riding the snowmobile uh, on a road and it had to be an icy road because he had a head on with a truck and uh, from what I understand he's rounding the corner and uh, sadly his mom and someone else was behind him thank God they were far enough back they didn't see it but he came around the corner at high speed it's a truck with a plow and uh, he was killed instantly. So when I had read that, I wanted to come back and pay respects and have a closer look at this uh, handsome young man to see his face. So, uh, uh, Joseph, we hope you're resting in peace. Died too young. Hey guys, I am uh, just getting off the highway here in Forest Park, Illinois, just outside Chicago, maybe 10 miles, and uh, the cemetery is right here. This is called the Forest Home Cemetery, and uh, this is going to be a quick one today. I just want to see, uh, look up a uh, gangster from the St. Valentine's massacre and resurrection mary here <laughs> and also uh there's a weird mausoleum i saw on another channel if i can find it uh but anyway let's see what's up we're in okay we uh, found the grave of a guy named adam aka frank hayer and uh it's right up here he was uh, a gangster and he was part of the Bugs Moran gang. He uh, was only seven months married. And his wife uh, still at that point hardly knew anything about him. As well as a son that he had. That he would only see every few months. He didn't know anything about him. Well, not surprising. He was the accountant for the Bugs Moran gang. And as the accountant, he was there, unfortunately, on that fateful day, the St. Valentine's Day Massacre. He was a victim. The SMC Cartage Company, where it happened, it was his building. He was the leaseholder. And uh, here he is. There are no markings whatsoever which is somewhat common of gangsters. If you can find their 
graves. In those days, I think they uh, were challenged to get buried on consecrated ground. I don't know that this is, but uh, also they probably didn't want him to be, uh, you know, souvenir hunters and gawkers, that sort of thing. But uh, what else can I say about uh, Adam? A.K.A. Frank. Well, I can tell you that uh, his dog, that German Shepherd, that was his dog. Its name was Highball. It survived the shooting, and it was the dog's barking that brought the authorities in, the incessant barking after the massacre. And in that massacre, this man, Adam Frank Heyer, had 15 bullet wounds the autopsy. So he will forever be remembered as one of those victims and that the dog Highball was mentally screwed up from that, uh, that incident, you could imagine. I don't think they put it down, but it was uh, messed that dog up. Anyway, that's the legacy. This is the Haymarket Martyrs Memorial. It was an incident that happened in Chicago. And uh, it started out as a, it was a peaceful protest for labor. And uh, it turned violent when somebody, maybe an anarchist in the crowd, somebody uh, threw a bomb and then police started shooting and it went into a complete free-for-all. Um, there's some roses here. A man fallen. The woman adorning him with a wreath. This is a monument for Emma Goldman. Emma was a Emma was an anarchist. Uh, the Haymarket riots inspired her to become an anarchist and political activist. She started a magazine and uh, was uh, pretty well known around these parts. I think eventually moving up to Toronto. It's an interesting. Uh, carving and uh, she is obviously remembered. Interesting monument here. Two children. Maybe it'll turn out better on video. Wonder who they were. And I see here there are two more. It's like babes. The rest. Sands of time, this limestone. Barely can read it. Three years old, I believe it says. This one I can't read. Perhaps on video. Some mausoleums here built into the side of the hill in major disrepair.
just ready to, uh, the earth is pushing forward here. It's a big metal door, cast iron. And beyond it is more metal. There's no way in there, even for family that are family mourners. Davis, rusted, beyond belief, look at this. This whole door is Horman. The door is ready to give way. I don't know if you can see in there, oh yeah. Is that a uh, crypt? I don't know. Let's look over here. Those look like, um, those are crypts. Oh yeah, there's a lot of crypts in there and that's built into the, uh, the hillside and is that a coffin I don't know it's hard to get the camera to uh, to focus when I try to point it that way it looks like a, I don't know what else would that be than a coffin Get a close up. I don't know, guys. All I know is I would not want to be stuck in there. Okay, we're going to try a different camera to see if we can see what's going on in here. You know, as I look at this, uh, it just seems uh, like this could be some grave robbery going on in here. Um, this is a better imaging camera with uh, a zoom. And uh, I don't know if that's a coffin or a vault box that holds a coffin. The other thing I'm hoping to get is uh, some names. Uh, can't really see. I don't visually see any names on these crypts. Um, I mean, the mess in there, there's such a mess, it's it's got to be grave robbery. I don't know. Yeah. Here's a detailed shot of the uh, side of it. There's a lot of uh, a lot of bodies in there. A lot of a lot of people. I don't know how high it goes. Let's take a look from above. I'm going to put my camera in here. Um, looking on tall. I don't know if I can reach. Yeah, I think I can. I think I can get up here. All right, here we go. Ah. Nope. <clears throat> oh, I'll come at it from... Uh, I can get up there, but I can't stay. I'll take a look above. Mm, not sure how stable that's going to be. This is interesting. A vent. I'm on this concrete roof, but this here does not look stable I think 
So I think that hole, I'm trying to remember where that hole was. I think it was over there. All right, if I fall, it's your fault. It'll be on video. I'm gonna proceed very carefully here. This hole, what roof structure there was is completely caving in. I'm definitely not gonna stand there. I'm going to lay down and see if I can This is not the right place. It must be over there where that column is. Look at this. Wow. That is just going into the depths. They say that families are responsible for upkeep of the graves, but happens when the families are gone. This is what happens. That's why they build them all out of granite. And you got to make this stuff like permanent because you will be forgotten. I can guarantee you this is forgotten. Where was the hole? Um, was up here. Okay. So I can step up there. All right. Let's try this again. So it's on top of this roof. It's right there. So step over there. All right, let's have a look. Oh man, it really smells bad crap. Guys, what am I doing? Oh, wow. All right, guys, that uh, that was not the mausoleum I was looking for, but you never know what you're going to run into as you mosey along here at these cemeteries. There's, uh, there's another interesting one. Clover. This has no windows. Look at that. Just... A mess. We had some deer here paying their respects and eating acorns. Well, this is the mausoleum that I wanted to see, the reason I came here. I saw it on another channel called Whiplash 714, another graveyard kind of channel. And what I thought was interesting, aside from the fact that there's no name anywhere on here and the door is kind of like, you know, an at-home door. And it looks like the door handle is glass porcelain. Uh, I think this is just an outer, very thick door. But what I thought was intriguing, they showed this on their channel, is the back window hole they stuck the camera in. And I was trying to figure out what, uh, whether that was a coffin or what. I don't know if my camera will do any better.
Those look like handles um, for pallbearers on the side of a coffin, and it does look like a coffin lid. Um, see if I can zoom in and get a little more detail. On the top, it's really hard to uh, hard to maneuver here. This is kind of the best angle I can get, but I don't know. That looks to me that looks to me like um, often. I can tell you that it's it doesn't smell here. Or not you know by now the body would be all dried out anyway, but. It's, it's very interesting that this would just be left like this. It's like some ornaments uh, or flowers on top. It's just sitting out in the open. Uh, I don't, I'm looking up, there is no, uh, so this is not an enclosed vault in here. They just have the coffins sitting out. Um, can't really see uh, on the other side, the left side. I'm going to try and maneuver the camera. I'm going to cut the clip here. All right, we've uh, got a coffin on the left side out in the open. And uh, we've got a coffin on the uh, right side as well. Two people unnamed out in the open. Well, I think that'll do it for today. So we'll just end it here at the Forest Home Cemetery at the mausoleum with no name, with the, uh, with the front door, with the casket sitting out in the open. How about that? So uh, anyway, have a great day, everybody. We'll see you on the next one.